this little guy right here, a little bear. I don't even remember where she picked him up at, but he's really cool and really heavy. And so we're gonna, she's gonna have me take all these flowers and that bandana off of it and I'm gonna haul it into my shop and we're gonna give that baby a facelift. I'm gonna do it just like I do the freeform concrete, so I'll show you kind of my process for repaint and stuff like this. Anyway, hang with me. so just to make sure we're all on the same page this is what I use it's made by Sealcrete this is for sealing and protecting anything that's made out of concrete really good stuff I got my brush a little bear and I'm getting ready to get started coating this thing and see if we can uh, Get that to dry pretty quick and we'll get started with the paint process. I'll get right back to you. Okay then, so I've got my palette, my brush, my swing lube, and I've got my paint. And I purchased this brand of paint. It's called Apple Barrel. Got it off Amazon, and it's uh, 16 fluid ounces, so I'd have a little extra paint. It's, it's a bigger bottle than comes with that Arteza stuff. Don't have a heart attack, but I'm getting ready to paint this thing completely black to start off with, and that'll make more sense as we go along. That was kind of a pain in the butt. However, I got a good coat on this thing. And the reason why I did that, you see the grains in the hat that is made to look like it's a braided straw hat. And all these indentions in the body that's supposed to look like fur lines. I wanted every one of those to be black. And that'll all show through <clears throat> I want to start adding the other colors to it. This is going to look fantastic. So to start off with, I decided to go ahead and set this thing up on the horse and do a mild touch up of all the spots I might have missed when I painted everything black. Then I'm going to let that sit and dry for just a few minutes to make sure that I got total coverage everywhere I need it. And now it's time to start the first base coat. You'll notice I'm using a sponge brush. The reason why I do that, it's nice and flat and it rides the highest ridge of whatever that you're trying to paint, leaving the, the impressions in the concrete of the fur untouched. The paint won't go into the creases and it'll leave a uh, a deep effect on that. You take your time, go with the grain, working in up and down patterns, and just keep working your way. You can start from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. 
take your time make sure that you're not getting paint in unwanted places so you have less touch up to do later I chose to use the uh, to leave the face blank because I'm going to paint that a different color to make it look like the bear has a little age on him and that's it for our base coat once he's dry you can see the uh, the black and the creases all through that statue where I told you I wanted to leave those to look like fur There's a good picture of the face. The next day, when I got home from work, the first place I went was to get a cigar. And then I went straight out to check on the bear to see if everything was nice and dry. Give it a once over to make sure there weren't any spots that I had possibly missed. Everything looks pretty good. now it's time to start my second color which is a light tan and I used an extreme dry brush effect on this so as not to put uh, a large amount of this color on there I just wanted to make sure that there was a little transition between that original brown color and the rest of the bear take your time on this and you definitely don't want too much paint on your brush. Once that dried, I immediately started with the third and final color on the bear, which is a dark brown. And using the same dry brush method, start at the bottom like I always do and move my way up. And then I switched over to a small brush to do the eyes and the nose. I always say God is in the details and you definitely want good crisp lines on anything like that. It just makes the piece look so much better. Now onto the straw hat. I just used a medium yellow base color. And as usual, use the dry brush so that the wicker marks on the hat would show through. And you definitely want to take your time working on areas like this on any piece that you happen to have. And make sure you don't get a bunch of excess paint on any of the parts you don't want to have to go back and touch up later. I work my way inward and where the brim and the hat meet, I try to get close with this brush and then I'll switch over to my little fine brush and get a good clean line around there. For the top side, I just want a good basic coverage of it. I want the wicker to show through and you'll notice on this particular piece that the bear's ears protrude through the hat on each side. So I want to get up close, but I don't want to get any excess paint on the ears if I can help it. And then I switch over to my small brush and go around the ears and make a very fine line. Once again, God's in the details and this makes all the difference on a piece. There's nothing worse than seeing one that it looks like somebody just half-assed it or really didn't put any uh, effort into trying to get crisp lines on everything. While I'm doing this, I'll stop occasionally and take a dry brush and brush where I use the small brush on the lining and blend it in with the rest of the paint so that that doesn't show up. It all looks natural and looks like like it just appeared that way as opposed to being blobbed on there. 
this is a big plus as well. I used a little white or light gray on the belly of the bear and the nose to give him a little age. You'll see a little more on that a little later. Now as an added bonus at the end, I took a small brush and got back into my brown and went back and any place that I might have got a little yellow paint, some place I didn't want it, I went back and touched it up and going into this much detail makes so much difference on your piece. I can't stress that enough. You can't tell what, what I'm doing here, but it's more of an auburn color that I dry brushed on over the yellow just to give it a little bit of a golden tint to make it look more like a natural straw hat as opposed to just a bright yellow hat. There's a good view of the face. I took my time, blended in the gray with the brown on the sides of his face and on the belly I dry brushed that on. And I even used a little white to put a little sparkle in his eye. Once that dries for 24 hours, you do the final step, which is more of the Silcrete sealer. And you can go on, you can be pretty lenient on, on the amount you put on there. Doesn't hurt if it starts running and dripping. You just have to make rounds and keep at it. And this is how he turned out. It was absolutely a beautiful piece. The Silcrete leaves a really nice shine. And this bear is going to look great for years to come. Thank you for tuning in.